Good morning, Father Wynn here. I've got my Peruvian coffee cup. And you're listening to the popular hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, as it was sung at the marriage of Prince William and Kate Middleton at Westminster Abbey. This is one of two popular tunes, both Welsh. The first one called Blinwarn and the second Heifredal, which is the more popular in the United States. But this is a tune for a poem by one of the two men we commemorate today, Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley wrote um, 6,000 hymn texts, 600 for the service of Holy Communion. So let me tell you a little bit about Charles and his brother, John, who had such a huge impact on the life of the church. John Wesley was born in 1703 and Charles in 1707. Uh, they were brothers and leaders of the evangelical revival in the Church of England in the 18th century. They both attended Oxford University, and there they gathered a few friends with whom they undertook a strict adherence to the worship and discipline of the Book of Common Prayer, from which strict observance they received the nickname Methodists. Having been ordained, they went to the American colony of Georgia in 1735, John as a missionary and Charles as secretary to the governor Oglethorpe. They found the experience disheartening and returned home in a few years. And there, three days apart, they underwent a conversion experience. John present with a group of Moravians who were reading Martin Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans received a strong emotional awareness, a sense of the love of Christ displayed in freely forgiving his sins and granting him eternal life. Following this experience, John and Charles with others set about to stir up in others a like awareness of and response to the saving love of God. Of the two, John was the more powerful preacher and averaged 8,000 miles a year, mostly on horseback, as he went around the country preaching. At the time of his death, he was probably the best known and best loved man in England. Charles was the better hymn writer of the two, and uh, many of the hymns which are familiar to us were written by him. Hark the herald angels sing, being another. Let's begin by taking a moment of quiet to close our eyes and to take a few conscious breaths. And sometimes it's good to breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth releasing your breath and feeling yourself sinking deeply into that quiet center, that still point, as T.S. Eliot calls it. releasing all that burdens us, all that we carry on our backs, in our minds, all that burdens our hearts, releasing it on our out-breath and sinking to that center where our heart and God's heart beats together and where our breath and God's breath breathe together and where we can let go of all into the hands and grace of God. And so we'll begin 
Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Continuing on page 82 of the Book of Common Prayer, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The psalm reading is Psalm 98, and I'll take a moment to sip from my coffee while you find your place. Psalm 98. And Fergus is not happy about something. I think probably because he's not being led into Kathy's office on the third floor where he wants to be, but where she is having a meeting. Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with the trumpet and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise in all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Just one comment here with equity. He judges the people in righteousness. In justice shall he judge the world and that, uh, that sense of judgment is not what frequently gets played out popularly. Judgment really has to do with making sure that all have enough. Enough so that there may be shalom, peace. Peace in their hearts, peace in their households, peace in their relationships, peace amongst the peoples. That's the judgment. It's a judgment made with absolute love for the well-being of all people. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, 
and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will respond to that reading with Canticle 14, a song of penitence, the Kyrie Pantocrator, uh, which is especially appointed for Lent. And Canticle 14 is on page 90. I'll take a pause again here. Page 90. I'm sorry. Yes, page 90. So, uh, Canticle 14. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collect of the Day. O Almighty God, you inspired your servants, John and Charles Wesley, with burning zeal for the sanctification of souls and endowed them with eloquence in speech and song. Kindle such fervor in your church we entreat you that those whose faith is cooled may be warmed and those who have not known Christ may turn to him and be saved, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for Wednesdays, collect for grace. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross 
that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And finally, a prayer for the morning. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, let me do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. We remember today the repose of the soul of Joanne. And we pray for all those facing illness, surgery, injury, or adversity, especially Ethelene, Curtis Bancroft, Mason Beers, Judy Belka, John Camp, Catherine Blackwood, Michael Copeland, Sue Cromlin, Carlene Cairns, Mary Earhart, Scott Francis, Ben Garrett, Doris Graves, Ella, Amanda Ipock, Gordon MacArthur, Cheryl McLean, Mary McEwen, James Malloy, Elmer Morales, Dennis Provost, Jordan Rogers, Jessica St. Clair, Phyllis Sayers, Mark Sayers, John Tanner, Kathy Taylor, Laura Waterhouse, Sam, Rick Watson, and his fellow shipmates on the USNS Carl Brashear suffering with COVID. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Have a beautiful Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow.